Welcome to the Revelation of Hope podcast with your host, Alvin Bonds II. Join us each week as Alvin explores the relationship between leadership and families by interviewing leaders in different fields all over the world. Alvin believes that the success of tomorrow's leaders begins with the success of today's families. Hello, and welcome to the Revelation of Hope podcast. I am your host, Alvin Bonds II, and this is episode 22. Today, I interview Paul Iwerwal. And before I get to that interview, I'd like to talk just a moment about passion. What is it that you're passionate about? What gets you up every morning? What keeps you up late at night? What is your passion? And one of the things that Paro talks about in her interview is to do something out of passion and not out of compulsion. And so I invite you to think about what drives you every day of your life? What drives you at work? What drives you in your business? What drives you at home with your children? What drives you in your leisure time? What are your passions? Some of us may feel like we have to put our passions on hold because of a nine to five job, because of a glass ceiling, because of constraints, because of a lack of knowledge or lack of information about certain things. Paro's life is an example that with the right mindset, perseverance and consistency Anything is possible. Paro is an international best-selling author, Forbes coaches council member, and the founder and publishing director of Alpha Female House, an international publishing platform. She arrived in America as an immigrant from India and obtained a double master's in engineering from Arizona State University. She worked nine to five as a research scientist and as an engineer for Intel Corporation. Alarmed by the miserable state of health of her colleagues in corporate America, Paro decided to pursue holistic studies and step on a healthy lifestyle. She became a certified wellness expert and launched her own business as a health coach, delivering the message of health through public speaking in various community centers and corporations. Paro's life and business changed dramatically when she wrote a book on the benefits of juicing, and it ranked as an international bestseller in multiple categories. From her kitchen table while being a stay-at-home mom and nursing her baby boy, with a small list and a very limited marketing budget, she was able to become an international best-selling author, launch in bookstores all across Asia, and landed in major publications like the Huffington Post, Thrive Global, Forbes, and she was invited as a guest on ABC Arizona. Through her international publishing platform called Alpha Female House, Paro helps thought leaders in health, wellness, and consciousness to write their books, achieve their bestseller status, and land in mainstream media, just like she did. Paru's mission is to help individuals lead the world and launch a movement and make a difference. It is an honor to have Paru on for today's podcast. Well, Paru, welcome to the podcast. Tell us about you. Thank you so much for inviting me. It's a pleasure. So my name, as you already mentioned, is Paru. I'm an international best-selling author members of the Forbes Coaches Council, independent journalist, or a contributor, you could say, for various publications, and the founder and publishing director at Alpha Female House, which is an international publishing house. But most importantly, I'm mom and I have two kids. One is six and a half and the other one is three months. Presently, my area of focus is publishing. So I come from a varied background, actually. My educational background is in engineering, and I have two master's degrees in engineering. But I was really, while I was working in the corporate sector as a research scientist, I was sort of alarmed at the state of my fellow colleagues. And I would look at the portion, I would say, you know, I feel like living a better lifestyle at the age of 50 
and I don't want to look like I'm 50 when I'm in my 30s or 40s. Yeah. Rather, you know, it should be the opposite. I would like to look 20s even in my 30s and 40s. And that point of time, you know, I decided that, you know, work is one thing and degrees are one thing, but living a healthy lifestyle, a holistic lifestyle is the most important thing. And at the same time, you know, while I was, you know, working, my father, he had major, you know, like a big heart attack and he had to undergo a major surgery, the triple bypass surgery. And that was essentially the trigger point, which, you know, motivated me to take a detour in my career, pursue holistic health and holistic nutrition. And, you know, I did a lot of programs in holistic nutrition and then ended up launching my own company, pursuing holistic nutrition and, you know, teaching corporate Americans, teaching people like me how to live a healthy lifestyle. But I wanted to go global and reach a bigger audience. And that is the point I decided to write my book on green juicing because I'm really passionate about juicing. I think it truly changed my life uh, for the better. So I'm a big proponent of green juicing. And I was writing my book. And once I wrote my book, I was not sure what to do with it. You know, I'm like, you know, I have spent five weeks, days and nights writing this book, what next? So I decided to learn everything that is needed, you know, to market the book. Understand Amazon algorithm, you know, work with the settings and stuff like that, work with the social media, and all that work paid off and my book became an international bestseller on Amazon in various countries and various categories. And at that point of time, you know, because I'd studied so much, so people started asking me what you have done, how you did this. And I started helping people publish their own books. And so far, I've helped like 100 people publish their own books and make them bestsellers. And it's all because, you know, I thought it was a perfect combination of my engineering skills and my holistic skills because by helping people, you know, share their message and then playing with the settings on the algorithm. So here I am today, founder of a publishing house, helping people share their message with the world. I think that's absolutely amazing. And um, your book, Juicing for Healthier Families, is, is something that's so vital for us today. And as a marriage and family therapist, my perspective is always systemic. Whatever the issue is, it's not just one particular area or doesn't only affect one particular area in our lives. We have to look at the whole person, you know, take a holistic approach. And I love that you're doing that. And I think what's so powerful is if you've taken your your engineering mindset and you've applied it to healthy living, and, and I think that's powerful, what drives the passion to touch other people's lives? Where does that come from? You know, from my own personal story and um uh, my life completely changed for the better in the last three years. And before that, I was uh, primarily a stay-at-home mom working from my kitchen counter. Of course, I could work the 9-to-5 job, but I was never inclined. I always tell people that I was not meet for a 9-to-5 kind of a job, no yes. matter how high being it is yeah. or it was in the past. And leaving a corporate job, starting my own business, being the mockery of the town, like, hey, you know, you're a fool to do for, uh, such a thing. And then three years down the line, making my mark in the world, landing up on American TV, being interviewed for so many podcasts and TV shows, writing for some of the major publications. I I look at me and I'm like, you know, if I can do it, anybody can. And my whole goal is to motivate people, inspire them that no matter how good or bad your condition is, you can do it because I have done it. And if I can do it from as I mentioned earlier, from my kitchen table. I mean, anybody can and anybody, everybody should. Everybody has a story, so it might as well be shared. Yeah, and I think that's powerful that you are empowering people to share their story and you've engineered a, a way for them to do that, you know, from a global perspective on multiple platforms. And I, I love... Um, on your website, you talk about leading the mompreneur movement. What would you say to someone that may be at the earlier stages of where you are now in terms of you may have a mother who isn't made for a nine to five like you are, 
what would you say to encourage them to give them some some hope at the beginning of this journey? You know, I would tell them that patience and persistence is what pays off in the long run. Obviously, you know, when I left my corporate job, I was obviously earning in six figures, probably. And uh, you won't start earning the same amount of money, you know, as soon as you start your business or as soon as you decide to, you know, work for yourself. It will take time. But you always know your why, like why you did this, why you changed your career or why are you doing what you're doing presently, you know. My biggest why was I wanted to spend more time with my son and, you know, watch him growing up. And I was not comfortable leaving him uh, with anybody else, even my husband for that matter, you know, <laughs> because he might not take care of him the way I do. Yes. Maybe you could call me extra possessive or something, but, you know, um, everybody needs to know their why. I had a strong why and I had this drive in me that I want to do it and I want to prove to the world that yes, you know, even if you're working for yourself, it might be a slow start, but you will reach, you know, because you're working for yourself, you're doing what you love doing, you're doing out of passion and not out of compulsion, you can scale greater heights. So just, you know, continue working hard. Of course, there uh, will be downfalls. It's not a straight climb up the hill. There are too many valleys, too many loopholes. But just be patient during those days and during those during that time when you're not doing so good potentially. Yes, and and you you mentioned doing this out of passion and not compulsion. Would you mind talking a little further about that? Because I don't know that a lot of people know how to do that. Yeah, you know, that's a very good question, Alvin, because sometimes I talk to uh, women, you know, because I also help moms set up their own businesses, you know, and then I ask them, what's, what, what is it that you like doing? What's your passion? And I'm like, you know, we don't really know what's our passion, essentially, you know, and literally my jaw drops because we've been so programmed to think, especially like coming from the country I come from, you know, we've been so programmed to study and then to land up a good job and then to, you know, do what the, you know, society wants us to do, that we somehow lose ourselves and don't really know what our true passion is. I look at passion as something that gives me joy. I remember when I was doing my nutrition classes, every cell of my body was happy. Yeah. I could sense it, you know. And um, likewise, when I'm writing, when I was writing my book, I, you know, my son was around three years old, and of course, in the daytime, I was with him. So I used to start writing my book literally at 10 p.m. until four or five in the morning. Yes. You know. So of course, I wouldn't recommend anybody do that because sleep is essential too. <laughs> but you know, if you really passionate about something, if you love something from the core and you are on a mission, then sleep disappears. It was, you know, I was never like tired during those, you know, I I finished my book in five weeks. I was never tired. I was always jovial. I was always happy no matter how much I was working. So, you know, something that gives you joy is a great way to find what your, where your passion lies. And I believe, you know, Anybody could essentially do pretty much anything if they're passionate about something. I can give you an example. There is a mom I know. Her daughter learns ballet dance. So she is really passionate about her daughter being a ballet dancer. She is passionate about other kids being ballet dancers. So she started a small video course online, essentially, like, you know, for moms, how they can support their children who are into ballet dancing or Mm. any sort of dancing. Because she did it out of passion, something that brings her joy, she just did it, you know, because she was passionate about it. And now it's a $6 business for her and she has left her job, which was not even paying so much. And her program is really popular among the ballet moms community. So like a business idea could come up from anywhere, essentially. That's so encouraging. And... I, I love that this is your personal story. This is your personal success story. And you are continuing to encourage other people, other women 
to to do that. And it is possible. And I think that's very encouraging to someone that may, like you said, not fit the nine to five mold that may think outside the box or just simply want to be at home with their children. I think that's amazing. And and you have developed yourself into a leader you know, in the industry. And I'm, I'm interested in knowing what is your individual philosophy of leadership? That's a good question. So, you know, I see a leader as somebody who obviously, you know, sees the success of his or her employees as his or her own success, you know, and the happiness of employees who really takes care of, you know, how the employees are doing or how the company in general is doing and not just in terms of uh, money, but also in terms of the general well-being of the company, you know, is everybody happy? Is everybody, you know, positive? You know, is everybody contributing towards their own health apart from, you know, company's health and by health, you know, because if everybody is happy, uh, then, you know, the whole culture of the company will be happy and uh, all of them are collectively contributing for the success of the company. And also being empathetic towards the employees, you know, this is the way I look at it. And it is maybe because I'm a mom and I have this modelina for people, which comes naturally to me. But I've seen, you know, in my uh, personal life, if I'm delegating the work to somebody, you know, if I'm just showing a little bit of compassion, you know, even if the person is working for me, they are so much more free and they're so much more productive look at my job, the work that I give them, or my company as their own company. It's not like, hey, it's our own company, so we shouldn't worry about, we should only work, you know, if we are getting paid by the hour, we should only work so much. In fact, they are, you know, willing to go out of their way to contribute to, you know, my success and company success. The personality of the leader, I would say, is reflected in the employees. Yes. If a leader is always very agitated, always very anxious, the employees would obviously, you know, subconsciously or consciously deliver those uh, vibrations. So creating a positive environment is my definition of leadership. And I, I appreciate you identifying the importance of compassion in leaders and or being compassionate towards their followers or those with whom they are supervising and that can be a very challenging balance because some, you know, leaders or corporate executives, they have a bottom line they're trying to to meet or they have shareholders or have to report to or board of directors. What resources or, you know, experiences, what, what would you encourage someone to, to do to increase that compassion while still balancing the bottom line? So, you know, what I personally do, I could watch for it. I uh, meditate. Mm. And I fast a lot. So, uh, you know, uh, and by fasting, I am able to reform, you know, okay, I need this work done by so-and-so date. We have to respect the deadline. But at the same time, you know, not screaming at the employees and showing that softer side, being soft and form at the same time. And how that comes to me naturally is, again, three things, you know, because I'm a mom. So we all have this inbuilt skill in ourselves because we have to get things done from our kids. Yes. And I believe, you know, the way you do one thing is the way you do everything. Okay. So, so if you're able to be soft and firm and kind to your kids, you could be soft and firm and kind to your employees also and get work done. Meditation helps me a lot. I'm able to, even if I'm meditating for 10 to 15 minutes a day, it is helping me for my 24 hours, you know, of yes. life. And, and again, fasting. So by fasting, I mean, you know, because of my health, holistic health background, every now and then I try to do it like once a week. I, I fast maybe on juices, maybe on water, depends, you know. Uh, I haven't like done an intense fast for the last one year because of my pregnancy and nursing my little one. Yeah. But yeah, but you know, if, if leaders are fasting, 
then they are they have a clear mind you know and once they have a clear mind i mean like you know they're not constipated because and if they are not constipated they are able to think better yes so if you have a clear mind and a clear conscience because of your meditation you're able to make the right decisions and balance your feminine and masculine sides of your behavior or your attitude and i just appreciate you you encouraging people to really be mindful and become aware of of themselves and you, like you said yeah. with fasting you you um withdraw from some certain things and then you allow yourself to really be present in that moment and i just i love this this idea that you talk about you are a mom you have birth life and there are certain things that you have to do for your children and you have to find a way to make those th- that happen just as a business executive has to make running their business happen. I'm interested in knowing what does leadership look like at, at home for you with your family? Leadership with me at my family. Hmm. Sometimes I have to be the form because, um, because my husband is towards a little bit of a softer side. So I have to discipline. I have to be the disciplinary mom. Okay. But at the same time, I have to, I normally, what I do is I explain the reason for my action. Yes. You know, for me, it's all about educating the person or educating my child rather than, you know, imposing things on him because I might impose things on him today, but tomorrow he might end up taking the wrong decision. Sure. So, you know, not only just for an example, not being a food police for him, but explaining him maybe through YouTube videos, maybe through taking them to actual nutrition talks, you know, why we should eat a certain way or why a certain type of food is not good for you. So, you know, it's all about a leader is, is a leader when they are able to make their peers or people or their subordinates or people who are working under them think for themselves, you know, and not just impose rules on them. That's what I try to do at home also, you know. Okay, today I'm with them. Tomorrow they have to go out. So wherever they go, they should be able to make the right decisions for themselves. So, you know, it might be a spontaneous reaction if they're doing something wrong. But then eventually I do sit down and I explain them the consequences of their choices and why it's important to make the right choice, even whether mommy is at home or whether mommy is outside. And I I love that you are instilling those values early in your children. So because they're going to become adults and you want them to continue to make good choices later on in life. That's powerful. You know, as, as a, as a counselor, I have the opportunity to work with different family makeups and and different issues that arise within the family, within us as a people. And so I personally believe that the success of tomorrow's leaders begins with the success of today's families. What do you think about that? Oh, I love that statement and I truly believe in it completely. I'm not sure if you get a chance to look at my site, but a book that I recently did, it's called When You Are Done Expecting. And The book is actually, I gathered more than 100 moms from all across the world who are talking about their stories of motherhood challenges, fears, and struggles as an inspiration, as a guide to other moms. And um, the whole, whole idea behind the book was what you just mentioned, you know, because the children of today will be the leaders of tomorrow. Yes. So... What are the challenges that moms have faced while raising their kids or are facing? And what lessons other moms could learn from it so that they could inculcate, you know, a brighter future for themselves and their kids? The book obviously, you know, has a very powerful message and beautiful stories from moms not only who are living in the United States of America, but also moms who are living in Canada, Australia, you know, Dubai, Qatar, India, South America. So, you know, you're getting a different perspective of the challenges, you know, that people have all across the globe and not just, you know, in one particular country. The whole idea behind it is to motivate moms to raise brighter kids for tomorrow. Yeah. 
Well, Peru, I just I appreciate you taking the time for this interview. Is there anything else you'd like to share with our listeners before we close? Thank you so much. And it's been wonderful chatting with you. So thank you for giving me this opportunity. And, you know, I'm on Facebook and Twitter as Author Paru. So if they need um, any guidance, I help people write published books and make them bestsellers. So if they ever need any help regarding book publishing and marketing, they are welcome to visit my website. Awesome. And tell us your website, if you don't mind. So it's my name, uh, first name, last name dot com, parulagarwal dot com. Awesome. Thank you so much for listening to this podcast. Please be sure to subscribe as well as providing a rating and review. Every week I will interview a different leader and invite them to share with us their views and perspective on the relationship between leadership and family. Be sure to visit my website. It's www.alvinbondsthesecond.com. That's A-L-V-I-N-B-O-N-D-S-I-I.com. Have a great day.